So guys, we we're at, finally at Friedheimer, a geothermal greenhouse in Iceland, and we're gonna have a tour and have lunch here. Okay. Let's go. Just stand in front of the desk. <laughs> Hey Mar, welcome. Uh, my name is Jan and I hope I will tell you everything about this company, what you need to know. Before we start, I will give you some more uh, tomatoes for tasting. You can try, it's really good, one of the best in the world. And I will explain you why. <laughs> so you can take some more if you want. It's really sweet. Yeah. You can take some more to your head, no worries. <laughs> so, if you want some more, you can take it going and just grab it for yourself. Friedheimer is a family business. Uh, in English, it means peaceful home. Elena and Knutu, uh, owners of this place, bought this place almost 28 years ago. They started just with uh, two greenhouses, but now they have nine of them and something around 11,000 square meters of land for our tomatoes. So it's a lot of place. Uh, we grow four varieties. We have picolos and also known as the cherry tomatoes. You can see everywhere in here because this is uh, Piccolo greenhouse. Then we have Livento tomatoes in the normal size. Also, we have uh, li uh, plum tomatoes in egg shape. And the last one is Erlon tomatoes. Maybe you know it's the, the, big, the biggest ones, very good for sandwiches and burgers. And also, at our farm, we are breeding horses. Maybe you saw some outside. And then we have a really nice restaurant in here. So, very good. Uh, how is that even possible to grow tomatoes all year around in here uh, with knowing that we have really not friendly winters in here? They cold, dark, and uh, yeah, how I said, really not friendly winters. I will give you the answer. Okay, you really like it, so you can take some more to your hand, no worries. Just guys, just take it. <laughs> also, you wanna? It's everything for you, so you can eat it all, no worries. <laughs> so. First of all, we need some heat because, you know, uh, in Iceland it's really important uh, to have some heat inside. Uh, you know, it's amazing because the glass on the walls is just five millimeters thin. So uh, we don't have so much space between uh, uh, the temperatures outside and also to inside. So we need to figure it somehow. What do you think? How we can do that? Feels like more of course. Uh, 200 meters away is the nearest hot spring. We are taking water from the hot spring, the same hot spring going in Gaze here, and we are pumping water from there. And that water has 95 degrees of Celsius, almost 200 uh, Fahrenheit, so it's almost boiling. And it circulates through our white pipes. You can see the white pipes in here, also underneath the plants and on the glass walls. It's our heating system, and it's why we always have nice 25 to 30 degrees of Celsius inside. It's really nice flare for our tomatoes. Also, uh, we need a lot of energy for our lights. You can see we have a high sodium lamps in here. For now, they are turned off because we have a lot of natural sunlight outside. But usually, uh, it's turned on 14 to 17 hours a day. So it depends on the season. And that's why we consume a lot of electricity. Uh, this electricity is uh, from renewable resources. So it's geothermal resources. It's green, so it's really nice for the nature. But you know, uh, it's also really cheap. It's uh, cheaper than other type of electricities. Maybe the only cheap thing in Iceland. Uh, then uh, we are the biggest farmer here in Iceland. Uh, we harvest every day 700, uh, 200 tomatoes. So it's 703, uh, 730 to uh, tons of tomatoes each year. So, but it's everything just for a domestic market. Uh, we do not export because we want to keep it as fresh as it possible. And we just uh, harvest uh, tomatoes when they are properly ripe, so that means red. And I will show you how you can find our tomatoes in the supermarkets. This is example of our piccolo box. Uh, you can see our logo, Fruit Hema, on the top. There uh, is Icelandic flag, so you can you always know uh, there is a local product. Uh, but our owners uh, goes a little bit further and then put on the bottom of the lid the nice picture of them and they are smiling at you. 
and also some small information about our company. You can call, can closer to you, no worries, you can find <laughs> Uh, so it's more information about our company, how is everything works in here. Uh, yeah. And now more information about the plants. Uh, in the back you can see uh, the small place called Baby House, also as a, known as a nursery. Uh, we starting uh, with the uh, plants there. We are starting from seeds. Uh, we have them there for six weeks. We are waiting for the first flower, so they're strong enough to go to the greenhouses. And uh, then we are planting inside of the old plants. We call it interplanting. Uh, you know, uh, the old plants still giving us a little, a uh, lot of good harvest, but the, it's not in here right now. <laughs> uh, and the and the smallest and the new one, new ones uh, grow stronger. And these plants uh, are here for nine months. And in the end of their life, they are nine meters long, so it's a long. <laughs> and uh, every week, uh, my colleagues from the greenhouse uh, need to lower the plants. You can see the white stripes on the top. They just need to lower it and twist it about the about the top of the plants because these plants are not uh, climbing by itself. And also, we are taking some leaves from the bottom and. Uh, that's why they look a little bit stripped underneath. And we are taking three branches from the bottom also. Uh, if you are asking why it's really simple, we know that these plants are the most effective when they have something between 18 to 20 branches each. Yep. We have 27,000 tomato plants in here in total and just taking care of 24 people from greenhouse. So it's a really a lot of work for them. <laughs> so uh, I was talking about my colleagues but I will introduce you my other colleagues. It's bumblebees. I don't have the bumblebee box here in here right now, but we will go in the other place. No worries, you will see them. Uh, we have, uh, but you can see the boxes in here, but I will show you the better one uh, later on. Uh, these boxes are from Netherlands. We don't have any kind of special Arctic type of bumblebees in here. Uh, in one box, you can find 60 female workers and one bumblebee queen. Uh, they are really hard workers. They can pollinate up to 2,000 flowers a day, so it's a lot. Uh, but you know, uh, it's really important because that's why uh, we have a tomatoes. We need to, uh, they pollinate our flowers, so that's why we have a tomato. Uh, but you know, they are really hard workers and they are also really clever. Uh, when they pollinate the flower, uh, they mark the flower with some kind of smell. And that's uh, why they know between each other to not uh, to uh, pollinate this flower twice. Also, they uh, leave some kind of footprint on the on the on the flowers, and this is for us, for uh, us in greenhouse, uh, because uh, when we saw that we don't have enough footprints on the flowers, we need more boxes. And yeah, uh, the most important task in the box have the queen. Uh, she stays in the uh, she stays in the box for all, all the time, uh, collect everyone, and reproduce herself. The second generation of the of the bees are mostly males, so unfortunately they don't not do not want to work. So uh, that's why we need to change change our boxes uh, regularly. And uh, but no worries, uh, these men have a good life with us. They're just flying around and try to find a new queen. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so and uh, maybe some uh, a few more words about our uh, technology in here. Uh, we have a liquid steering computer. A lot of here, uh, a lot of stuff in here is connected uh, to our uh, computer. Uh, you can see we have a lot of uh, small parts in here. Uh, we are taking, we are taking water. We are watering them, uh, but it's connected to our computer. We know how much water we need to water. And we have a lot of sensors there, so that's why we know how much water we need to water. We have a, we have a weather a weather station on the roof, so uh, that's why we know when we need to have our lights on or off. So a lot of stuff. That system helps us deal all environments, such as light, humidity, uh, air conditioning, and apps. And you know, for me, it's also amazing because it's connected to our owners' our phones. They have a special mobile app inside, and they can steer environment in here from anywhere in the world. They just need Wi-Fi or internet connection. So I have a really good example. They were last week in Paris, in France, and they decided to turn the line off in at the greenhouse. They just pressed the button in their iPhone, and that was it. And they was 2,000 kilometers. So it's really amazing. <laughs> so 
uh, also, when uh, is, uh, how I told you, uh, it's, uh, nine, when it's nine months old, we need to take it out and we composted it uh, because we take uh, we give it to our local farmers here so they can use it. Uh, we want to uh, be doing as it possible. And, yeah. and also I will show you a little bit of what we have in products in here. So later on, uh, oh, we can zoom it. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> We have a lot of our homemade products. Uh, in the front, uh, in the front of the reception, you will see some uh, shelves with our products. We have, for example, tomato jam. You can see it in here. We have barbecue sauces. We have desert sauces. Only thing what we don't have is ketchup. I don't know why, but uh, we have almost everything. So later on, you you are free to go there and grab it for yourself. Maybe you will find some really nice products to tasting and to take it home. Uh, if you have any more questions, you are free to ask. I will. Uh, uh, lead you to our bumblebee box so you can see the box and what's everything inside and maybe uh, I will tell you what we have in here so you can have for lunch we are famous okay. because of our tomato soup it's served on the buffet on the, uh, we have two buffets over there uh, it's all you can eat so if you decided to take the soup you can refill it as much as you want also we have a lot of bread on the buffet the bread is included to every single meal in here and it's really good it's home baked so you need to try also we have a really good salad in here then we have Two types of tortilla. It reminds me of mozzarella pizza. It's just two slices of tortilla on top of the freshly sliced tomatoes with some mozzarella cheese and basil. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, a vegan version with some pesto and fresh vegetables on top. Then we have pasta ravioli uh, with some ricotta cheese and spinach inside with our wow. tomato pasta sauce. And also we have mussels with our seafood tomato sauce. Then we have herlamen burrata. It's called, uh, it's really nice, it's just freshly sliced tomato with some burrata on the side. It's really nice for sharing, so I can recommend it for you. Also, we have a lot of desserts in here. So everything is based on tomatoes, so you can buy tomato ice cream. We also, we have tomato, three types of tomato sorbet. We have tomato cheesecake, and also we have tomato, uh, tomato and apple pie, so you can find wow. everything in here. Then I can recommend a lot of drinks for you. We have a lot of Marys. We have Bloody Mary, Happy Mary, uh, Mary Poppins, Virgin Mary, Healthy Mary, and Mary Poppins Baby. Uh, also, we have alcoholic types and non-alcoholic types, so you will see it on the table. It's really nice <laughs> to try. So, and maybe I forgot uh, to mention one thing. Uh, if you want to have a really good taste and flavor in tomato, we need to watering our plants with some quality water. If you are asking why, uh, again, it's a really simple answer. Uh, tomato consists 94% of water, so that's why some quality matters. And that's why we're watering them as the same water as you will be drinking uh, at your table and also at our homes in Iceland. Yeah? Uh, do you have any kind of question on, on me? What do you think? Uh, how deep is uh, the geothermal pipe that you use? Uh, how deep, you mean? Uh, I in, Okay, uh, I need to... Uh, this is another question, I need to find the answer. Uh, but I will tell you, no worries. Something else, guys. Um, what is your oldest tomato plant right now? Uh, this plant right now, as you can see, it's five months old. Yes. This is five months old. But uh, it is the oldest one oh, yeah. and in every greenhouse because we changed it uh, yeah. a few months ago. Do you know we are the biggest farmer of tomatoes in Iceland? Yeah. And we have one line for cucumbers, but it's just for our kitchen. For yes, the, it's for our kitchen. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you know, in Iceland is everything possible. When we have some geothermal uh, the energy in here, or some a hot spring or boiler home yeah. nearby, you can find a lot of greenhouses around. In this village is also some a strawberry uh, strawberry greenhouse, a blueberry greenhouse. Uh, All geothermal and for yeah, yeah, they are using geothermal energy also. Yeah. Uh, everyone in here. Also, we have just green one greenhouse just for egg flowers. So everything is possible course, in Iceland. Yeah. In Nilma, in the uh, city of Ludia, uh, you can find uh, three greenhouses or four greenhouses, I guess they have, uh, just for mushrooms. So everything is possible. And you know, with tomatoes, it's really nice because in Iceland, we are almost independent. 90% of tomatoes are from Iceland, in Iceland. And just 10% wow. we are importing from the Spain. But it's mostly just because we have a free, we have something around 3 million of uh, uh, travelers uh, from abroad every year, each year. So they uh, use a lot of tomatoes also, so that's the reason. That's but in a few years, we have a really nice plan to be uh, independent uh, and have every tomato. We have 45%. 45%. 45, 40, from 40 to 45% yeah. from the domestic market. So we are the biggest farm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I and there are other tomato farmers on Iceland, or do they import? No, no, no. we have a lot of farms here yeah. also. But for tomatoes. For tomatoes right. also. Yeah. There is a lot of uh, seasonal, just seasonal tom uh, tomato farmers. Okay. They don't produce during the winter. Uh -huh. But also we have a few more farmers with geothermal energy with hot water springs. So uh, we are not the only one, we are, but just but the, we are the biggest one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And also, uh, I told you we do not export. Uh, it's not uh, almost true. <laughs> uh, we give a few pallets a year to Greenland, but yeah. it's uh, just a few times a year. They don't have anything like this there. So yeah. That's oh, that's very nice. That's yeah. Nice, yeah. And also, I can, uh, because we are in here, this yeah. is not usual to take some people in here, so you are really lucky. Okay. I will show you something. Please follow Thank me. Thank you. Okay, it's yeah, not that far away. But you know, uh, this is our system when we put minerals inside. It's some sodium, calcium, and everything. And we are mixing it with the best quality water from the from the glacier. And from there, we are pumping also uh, straight away to the, the soil with these really small white parts in there. And for now, I will take you to our bumblebee box. So please follow okay. me, guys. Right now, <laughs> so this is our bumblebee hive. Uh, you can see we have a lot of bumblebees inside, and you can try to find the queen. She's twice as big. Maybe if you want uh, to have a nice picture of them, just take it out and put it on the screen. You will have no reflection. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can put it on the screen. Just the phone on the screen. Twenty-five to thirty centimeters per week. So, it, and they have three more branches on top. So they still grow and still grow. And how I told you, uh, in the end of their life, they have nine meters long. So it's really nice. Wow. How long do the plants last? Like, let's say when you put the new one in, mm -hmm. for nine months. Yeah. Just nine months. Just nine months. Really? And then we just okay. taking it out, and uh, we are giving uh, and we are composting them with our local farmers. Mm. Again. So. Nothing we are just throwing away, we're just using them again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is basil, and that comes with little scissors so we can chop it off and eat it. And they said it's really sweet, and so we can put it, also put it in our food. It comes from this nursery garden out here. So. So it's also really good. Yeah. So it's 
Yes, your Mary Poppins babies. How's the soup? Oh, delicious. Yeah, and uh, the basil is just so sweet. So, just so, so you guys know that I love clams, so let's eat it. This, these are the desserts. This is tomato sorbet. This is um, tomato cheesecake. This is tomato ice cream. And this is apple pie, tomato apple pie. This is the cream put the tomato on. Let's try them. So, let's taste them. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. It is very soft. I like how it's very soft. Creamy. Um, a little bit creamy. It's a bit. It's, uh, I can really taste that tomato in there. Um, and now for the tomato cheesecake. Let's see. Wow. I can really taste the, uh, it's really creamy. Unlike the sorbet, it has a stronger flavor. Um, in the tomato part of the cheesecake. I like that a lot. The ice cream. Let's try the ice cream. Okay. Mm. Wow. Some reason I taste a little apple in there, but the tomato is very, very strong, you know? Um, it's a bit harder than the other ones because those are the uh, the other desserts are softer. Um, but I like it. I like it a lot. Wow! Now the apple pie. Okay. I feel like the cream is a bit like whipped cream. I think, yeah. And then the apple pie. You can taste the apple and the uh, and a little tomato in there. I like it. I like the combination. That's smart. So guys, we just finished lunch at Fred Heimer, and it was an amazing lunch. I totally recommend it. I yeah. can't believe they grow tomatoes all year round. I know, right? 700,000 tomatoes for you. Crazy. So, thank you so much, guys, for watching, and see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.